All right, in this last model, I want to show you guys the lungs and the thoracic cavity. This model also has more than just the thoracic cavity. It has the mediastinum and it has portions of the trachea and the larynx up above. So don't forget, as you're studying pictures of these models, to look through the larynx, which has the thyroid cartilage, the hyoid bone. There's even the epiglottis up above, if you get your hands on this model. Cricoid down below here. And this portion of the model comes off, so you can see the true vocal cords, the vestibular folds, so forth, so on. That's going to lead to the trachea, and then the trachea dives down deep to the blood vessels. Okay, just big major blood vessels of thoracic cavity, like the common carotids and subclavians on either side, brachiocephalic veins, so forth, so on. You guys don't need to go back through all that. This trachea dives down deep before branching into the bronchi, and then each bronchi goes to a different lung. So let's look at these lungs. There is a left lung and a right lung. There is an apex and a base. The apex is the most superior aspect, the point, and the base, most inferior aspect, and it lays on the diaphragm down below. And I'll show you guys what that diaphragm looks like in just a second. The lungs, though, don't look the same, do they? The left lung and the right lung don't look the same. The left lung has two lobes and the right lung has three lobes and I'll just turn it so you guys can see that a little better one two three this is called the superior lobe middle lobe and inferior lobe only the right lobe has a middle lobe because it's the only one with three lobes each one of the lobes is divided by a fissure there is a horizontal fissure that divides the superior from the middle and there is an angled fissure that divides the middle from the inferior. This angled is called an oblique, like everything angled in the human body, oblique fissure. The left lung looks the way the left lung looks because what organ lies deep to it? The heart. And the heart sits mid-sagittal, but most of that heart is going to point off towards the left side of the thoracic cavity. It sits on the diaphragm as well and it takes up space. So the left lung has to give up some of that space and it creates this big notch in it called the cardiac notch. Now the left lung, because of that, only has two lobes, a superior and an inferior, divided by an angled fissure. So this is going to be an oblique fissure as well. The last thing to think about before I pull this model apart is that there is a membrane on the surface of these lungs. That's a serous membrane. Which portion of a serous membrane sits on the organ itself? The visceral. So this is going to be the visceral associated with the lungs is pleura. So visceral pleural membrane. And don't forget, there's a parietal pleura as well, but that sits on the thoracic cavity. So the thoracic cavity, the actual walls of the thoracic cavity, the ribs, right? That's going to have the parietal pleura. And in between the parietal and the visceral, there's going to be a pleural cavity filled with pleural fluid, which helps with the inflation of the lungs. That's a part of the anatomy that's critical in the physiology. So make sure you guys take note of that. Now, let's go ahead and take off these two portions. And let's go ahead and take off the heart and what you'll notice is that the trachea dives down deep to the big blood vessels like the aorta here right ascending and aortic arch descending aorta back below and the descending aorta wraps itself over superior and then deep and then runs inferior to the left bronchi uh, bronchus which is pretty darn cool if you think about it so this is the most inferior aspect of the trachea, branching left, branching right. This is the carina, so the left main bronchi or the primary bronchi and the right primary bronchi over here, which goes out to the individual lobes of that lung. Now, one more thing I'm going to point out is this muscular tube here. It's part of the digestive system, but this is the esophagus, which has been running deep to the trachea this entire time. Now, what I said I was going to come back to, because it's so darn important to the function of the lungs, is this huge muscle down here. 
which as it's connected by all these different tendons, it makes the diaphragm concave. And when the diaphragm contracts, these muscles shorten, and that's going to cause this diaphragm to flatten out. And as the diaphragm flatten out, it's going to increase the volume of the thoracic cavity deep to it, and that is going to decrease the pressure. So as the volume increases, the pressure decreases, and therefore air flows into the lungs. So that diaphragm, please, please know it, right? Connected by that phrenic nerve to the brain, it's a very important aspect of your respiratory physiology. All right, hopefully you found this whole thing useful. And I have a hard, fun time putting it all together for you all. Um, please share it with others if you found it useful. If you were able to use it for your studies, then somebody else will. And that's all I care about. Humankind, be both. This is some AMP madness with Dr. H. I'm out. <laughs>